So as we start your second match here, Cal rethinking his structure of his game and how he can come against Flash now. The ultimate weapon really putting it to him on that matchup, even though, like I said, Cal thinking he had the match, Flash just staying so calm, cool, and collected. You can see him in the booth, just not even wincing a bit, ready for the matchup. There he is, Flash on your left, Gujilla on the right, these two poised and ready to win the gold medal. Yeah, heading out, fighting for the gold first place and Silver second place. This is all about this next map. It's gonna be really interesting to see what Flash does on this map. He's gotta be careful because this map actually does really favor Koros Cheese. It's so easy for them to cheese you. He's gotta be careful of that. I'm not sure if Godzilla will be thinking that if he could take Flash up in a straight up game. And he is playing against the ultimate weapon, the number one player in StarCraft in the world right now, going against the best. It's gonna be an incredible game and we're gonna get this game underway right now. Yeah, you're never really going to see any better play. Korea, just the center of the StarCraft community where the most impressive play and the hardest play comes from. We've even said it many times during the cast that the Korea players have a harder qualifier than anybody else, so it's almost a disadvantage to everybody, even for them to come out of their qualifier with such strength. Here we go, your match starting on Destination. And here we do have Flash spawning on the top side of this map. Godzilla down on the bottom. And it's going to be really interesting to see what both players do. This is a two-player map. There are no other spawn points. So both players do know exactly where they each other are. And this map, like I was saying, it's so easy for you to get, you know, just a bunny hop from expansion to expansion. It really means that taking your third base as Terran is super easy. I wouldn't be surprised if he does go for, like, a... a Factory first into Siege and then trying to take down his expansion because going for like a the, the usual flash plays he likes to go for the Rax expansion but on this map I really don't think that's a viable strategy because if a Protoss player does go for 2-3 gate range Dragoons it's going to be extremely hard to defend your natural because it's so wide you can get a great con curve around so I'm probably going to expect flash to go for a one uh, for a one factory expansion. Yeah, this is actually Kale's first time, I should mention, at a World Cyber game, so coming yes, in with extreme well. play. Yes, actually. Yeah, they're both first times at the World Cyber games, getting to the finals at their first World Cyber games. They are going to take a gold and silver between them, but this map is going to decide what exactly each medal is going to be and who the medal is going to go to. He is moving around, checking out for any, you know, any hidden proxies, anything like that. And if you do look at the Supply Depot placement inside the base of... Flash, the way it's placed there, instead of being put down on the ramp, it is placed slightly towards the back, and that is just in case of any cheese. And then we see just the way the scout in the SCV is moving around, it is just checking of any cheese, any proxy pylons, any gateways are being placed anywhere outside his base. Yeah, that's a really good idea. You know, it can, like you said, when you play against a Korean player, a lot of people need to cheese. It's the only thing they can really do to get that win out because, like I just said before, the qualifier is so hard, one of the hardest in the world, and these guys just have that ability to play to figure it out and make it hurt that much more if you really try to do it against them because the failed cheese is just going to make you go down that much faster. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you don't really, you don't want to lose to cheese, especially in the World Cyber Games finals. And we do see Gojilla putting down the Nexus on 12. The barracks is going down, and it looks like Flash is going for gas as well therefore we are going to see the factory expand probably that's the probably safest build on this map to do but then again Godzilla going for this expansion <laughs> bring on the pepper jack <laughs> he is going for this early expansion of 12 hatch and that's really going to help him out a lot especially playing against a macro orientated style like flash yeah definitely what kind of uh structures or builds text can we see come out of the hands of flash on a map like this what does Terran want to do to control this map I mean, they really just need to go for heavy mech style and like I said, just get a ton of siege tanks and slowly move around the map as that's what they want to do, especially taking the third base. But the key point on this map as a Terran player is to try and hold the middle, especially across them bridges. And if you do hold the middle and the middle bridges, you're going to be in such a hard lead. It's going to be extremely hard for Protoss players to do anything about that. Yes, indeed it is. We can see the scouts in and out of the base. He will be making his way out. We'll have to see if he puts anything down. And I don't think he will. Saving that probe, keeping his numbers up so he can keep the build the way he wants it. That factory going down. The barracks going out to make sure nothing is happening outside the base. He's going to use that for a little bit of a visual as he does not have any units really pumping around yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we do see the cyber core just about to finish. The second gate going down. Are we going to see the expansion by Flash? We do check his minerals on screen right now. He's coming up to 400. Is he going to be putting down that expansion as predicted? I don't know. He's up to 400 now. The, the SUV is moving down. It looks like we are going to see the expansion being put down by Flash. There's no add-on yet on the factory, surprisingly. 
Yeah, all right, so he did put that barracks down. I thought he'd already put out a few Marines to hold in the base and then use that right over the ledge, but no, he did it throw it down right next to his expansion that he's saying, or putting down, as you said, a few Marines out, possibly to run around with that probe. No, he's gonna get right by, so he's oh. gonna have an eye in the base the whole time. He does see it, but it is gonna get to see a lot more than he would like. We can see the expansion going down in the machine shop, possibly to get down your siege tanks right away. We do have a vulture out, so he's more likely gonna go for that spider mine, and he oh, is he gonna force these up. A another? very nice another? job forcing the probes oh, off. Nice, really play here by, well, it takes a second one down. Is he gonna get, be able to get a third? Wow. Takes down the third with one vulture. Is he gonna go for the fourth? This is huge, he goes for one. Yeah, second hit goes down for the fourth. Fifth, is he gonna get that fifth down? Oh, he gets the fifth down as well. Really nice play, and that gives Flash a huge, he gets a sick kill. Oh my god, one vulture getting that vulture before the machine shop on his factory comes down and does a ton of damage, and that really, really does help Flash out a lot as it does cut down the probe count for Godzilla. Yeah, that is gonna hurt a lot. Right now, he was really worrying about upgrading or not upgrading, creating more buildings, creating more units, but now he's got to focus back on the probes to build his economy right now, and really that's not what he wanted to be doing. And we're still not seeing range being produced by Godzilla yet. I mean, he's trying to just produce a ton of probes to get this economy running. He did lose a lot there, and a couple more vultures are being made. Spider mines are being... Well, we have finished being researched, sorry. Second, third factory, second factory has been done now. And he is mining the back of the minerals because that's probably where he will be looking to set up his third base. Yeah, he's definitely got that uh, going out. Siege tanks as well on the way out as the spider mimes has been researched. And we saw the fact, or the fact, the machine shop spinning once again as uh, the core is going possibly for those Dragoon upgrades. We haven't seen any yet. Uh, I have not. The Zealots still blocking around the base, making sure nobody's getting in right now. The SCV has been killed that was inside his base. So no eyes right now for Flash inside Gujilla. Right now, neither of these have an observer or a unit out to really see what they're doing. So they're probably trying to feel each other out right now. These spider mines trying to contain a little bit outside the bridge area. And he's looking to, this is pretty much what Flash did in his earlier matches. Yeah, vultures are just so key in this matchup, especially on this map, because they just allow Flash to harass, as we saw before. It allows him to scout around the map to find any pylons, any hidden tech, especially because against playing a Protoss on this map, they love the high tech, so he can scout it out. And he lays mines across the entire map, forcing Protoss to get the observatory out and then move out after he gets that. And, and then also, he is allowed to see the map, I mean, not the map, but the army composition of Protoss to see if he is going to go for this back expansion. He is moving down. He will see that the probe is starting to mine. He is going to lay some mines down there as well. So vultures are really key. The academy almost finishing and he will be looking to get the comp stats pretty soon. Yeah, actually, I believe it was the match against Inferno where he got a lot of units up to the middle of the map where you were talking, got across that crest of the bridges and down oh. to that first expansion, was able to move tanks in, and he'll sit there for a while, and then he'll actually try to move as slow as he can across the base and take him out. But he will sit outside your expansion for a while to just break you down and make sure he's not going to lose any units on the way in. Yeah, Flash was actually caught in two mines there. He was thinking about going towards the back of the base and setting up seeds so he can do damage onto the mineral line. Decides not to do it. And he does move his tank back up to his base. He's just going to grab the third instead. Or is he moving down now with a couple of tanks? Yes, he's now decided to move down. And he will definitely try and go towards the back. Look at this dropship already there expecting Flash to do this. Really high level play by both players. The third base of Flash is going to be going down any second. He has enough minerals and he will be putting that down on the top right hand side of the base. And we do have a little bit of movement down on the bottom of the map from Gujilla here on the outside. He is gonna see what is across that bridge and his Dragoons do not like it. I believe that was a tank there on both sides, unless those are both spider mines. It looks like they are actually, and they're finally the observer out, and it looks like the support Ooh. bay as well. And that's really hidden away because he doesn't know about that, the robotics facility being there, so we are gonna see a reaver out. And this is really key right now. I mean, because of this, he spent so many resources on that, and he could, and this is really what I was talking about before. You cannot let Flash control the middle of this map. It is so key because it's so hard for you to push out, especially when you funnel your units through the bridges on your natural. And it looks like Flash is going to go towards the back of the base. This Reaver, will it be able to help out against this? I don't know. We're about to find out. Really, he's got to use in that area where they choke him up on the bridge. He's going to be, yeah, right there on the outside. He does not want those tanks to get close. And he actually put a lot of pylons right next to that, obviously, to stop him from getting in as fast and choke him up. But those tanks are going to be able to siege out that supply as soon as they start going head-to-head. -head. Yeah, this is really interesting to see what he does. He has broke down the minerals on the back of his base, so he is able to move around. But there are mines there on the bottom left-hand hand side of the screen. I don't think he has an observer with him. He's moving a ton of Dragoons in there. He does have an observer, so he does see it. 
Luckily for him, he's not going to lose any units. He's going to push out and would surprise me if he does try and get the third because Flash has got his third. It's almost completed. And in terms of economy, Godzilla is slightly behind. Yeah, he definitely is behind, and it's almost because of that uh, that five probe attack in the beginning by the one vulture able to take him out. This game is about units creation and upgrading, but really, if your economy is not where you want it to be, you're not yep. going to be able to do any of that unit creation. And the shuttle speed is coming in. He has got shuttle speed, and he's going to move in with the Reaver, but there are a ton of turrets and mines everywhere. There's not really any holes for the shuttle to move in with. I mean, that's the reason why he hasn't got this to the expansion, because he spent so many minerals on the shuttle, the shuttle speed, the Reaver as well. The third base is up and running. He really does need to try and find a hole so he can make use of this Reaver rather than using it for defensive options. You know, this is where Flash is really relentless. You see Godzilla going around and taking out all of his spider mines. Oh, a very really nice, nice attack drop. right there, but he may lose his Reaver here if he cannot grab oh, it. Oh, really nice play there by Beautiful. Godzilla. Dropping a, you know, Zealot bombing right onto those tanks. Doing a ton of damage, and once wow. again, oh, he doesn't quite get that SCV. He's got to be careful, though. This Reaver can do a ton of damage, especially if it gets a scab <laughs> right in the middle of all those vultures. They're all just chasing this dropship around like they're going to give him food as he drops it out. They oh, want to get that Reaver almost right into that, taking out the full dropship. But like I was saying before, just laying spider mines everywhere where you'd think Gujilla would be able to go in there, take out a few, be able to clear that. But like I said, Flash, oh. very consistent. And another very good grab by Gujilla there. I don't think he's going to be able to drop it again at this point. So he is just going to hold off here. The Vultures are going to stop going. They know that he is just going to back off with that. The Reaver was very weak in the red. Yeah, and that super, is going to be the end of that little yeah, battle. Yeah, super far in the red. He's not going to be really able to do any more damage because Flash has got... Is there no holes in Flash's base where he can move in with the Reaver? And it looks like he's trying to push it. Trying to do a little harassment here. It's not going to be really effective. There are a ton of Vultures, a ton of Siege Tanks. And then again, if we look at Godzilla's army, I mean, the army, the ground force, isn't really that huge. He's going to rely a lot more on this shuttle. And he is famous for using the shuttle and the Reaver. Let's see if he can live up to his nickname, his expectations of that. And see if he can do a ton of damage to Flash. Yeah, we'll see what he can do. That red shuttle, if he can prove that his name, the red shuttle, is true. And I think he can. He has been using, we see a, lot, a big movement of vultures towards the left side of the map. At oh, your 8 o'clock right now, there's a probe just kind of hanging out there, oh, so he knows it's there, timing. and he has been moving them out of the base as the transfer goes down the cannon as well, and he will not be able to protect that Nexus. One of the expansion goes down with the shuttle sitting right there as it just watches. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the Dragoons were all in the middle of the map, and these vultures especially, they're so fast. They are so fast, and they just go down. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get the expansion. He could go in. No, the Dragoon is blocking the ramp, unfortunately. That is really nice. He's going to try and take it down, though. Is he, no, he's going to get crowded. I would have oh. just tried to go straight into the base. Probs are coming back out, and nice defense by Godzilla. Not, well, he kind of did delay the expansion, and, you know, having it saturated really took a lot of time out of Godzilla's hands. Really nice play there. Harassment style by Flash. You know, he may have recovered from that one before, but he's going to keep doing it, and Flash will not allow Godzilla to get the upper hand here. And now 600 minerals to 200 as the supply is 127 in favor of Godzilla and 106 in favor of Flash. Yeah, I mean, Godzilla pulling ahead by a couple of 20, I mean, by 20 supply now. Uh, looking across the map, pretty safe play. Flash has got his fourth up now, which is really cool because, I mean, Godzilla's only on his third. I mean, he doesn't really look like he's getting his fourth. Oh, he puts his fourth down right now. Uh, he should be looking to try to go for Arbiters pretty soon. Sitting in the middle of the map, oh, five gateways now. Uh, Still have done a couple of, oh, two shuttles. I only saw the one before he has two shuttles moving out. Upgrading, the, uh, upgrading plus one on these Grand Army as well. Very nice. Yes, there they go. They are speeding off, and we're going to see these shuttles harassed now. The factory is about to go up in multiple numbers for Flash. We are going to see that tank and Vulture Army start to come out in that amazing micro game that we've seen. All grand finals long here from Los Angeles, California, ladies and gentlemen. Your StarCraft Brood War final matchup. Korea taking home all three medals. The bronze to Jadong, who will take home the silver and the gold right now between Flash and Godzilla. Now, really nice tank placement here. Can't really move across the forward bridge in the middle of the map because of them tanks being there. And Godzilla, I really like how he is moving around the map. You just keep an eye on where Flash's army is. And this is what Flash likes to do. Sit on three or four bases and just do a ton of macro, build up this large army. And two shuttles, it looks like, are going on the left-hand side of the base. I'm not sure if they are going to be able to do enough damage because there are turrets and mines everywhere. And he has not seen the mines back there, but he has seen the turrets. And he can make an in and out to drop those turrets once. Oh, oh he, he just found, found an hole. opening. Oh, Flash did not have it. He is going to be able to drop right in the economy line. There is two Reavers, the Scarabs, to do that detrimental damage. Here it comes. The factory's about to take it as the probes go out. And he goes for the armories on the upgrade. 
Oh, and this could be huge if you manage to take out both these armories. Flash going for his 200 200 building. Oh my god, it's the Vice on 14 HP. Will he be able to get an SCVs in there to repair? No, it will go down. Both armories go down. Really, really nice play by Godzilla doing that because that's what Flash needs. He needs both of them armories to get his upgrade. They are not being upgraded now, and it's going to slow down Flash a ton. And that really does give Godzilla an advantage going in to the later game. Huge. Both of those economy bashes that Flash did before were both negated right there. The tables have been turned to Godzilla. Is way back in this one with a beautiful drop right in the main base of Flash on his economy line. Found that opening. Flash always building a ton of turrets. Missed that one. It was on the 75% of the build and Godzilla took full advantage. Yeah, Arbiters are being produced now as well. Double factories are being remade towards the back of the base. We can't see in this game how far the upgrades were done, but here we're going to have a Big confrontation now. A ton of units and oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Wow! Two and there's so much damage. Godzilla looking in fantastic position right now. So he has done up to all these Dragoons are mounting. More Zealots are coming, taking all down all these tanks. Wow, what great drive. All these Dragoons are doing so much damage. Godzilla is really fighting wow. this out now. Very well played, mind dragging extraordinaire, taking out at least five tanks on one of those attacks from the Zealots at one time from the Spiders. And Flash really now on his heels, I think, for the first time in these matches as Gujilla just forces and forces his, his ranks yeah, and at Gujilla in the middle of the map. He's just reinforcing only with Zealous right now. They are so cheap to make and they are fast. They got speed. They're going to be straight inside the base. And look at this. He's got to have proof in Michael Yesen on the mine there. But oh, he takes four Zealous with that one mine. The mine, oh, the tank goes down. And Gujilla's going to walk straight into the base of Flash. Flash is on the back foot fighting in the finals against Gojilla. Will he be able to hold this? If he holds this, this is incredible. He has a couple of C stacks and he does hold on. Oh my god, that was so close. Really nice play by both players. Flash manages to hold on to fight another battle. Yeah, that was absolutely amazing. Flash really not blinking an eye, but he was on his heels. Huge time, and now he has to rebuild his army. They were at about 130 supply each. Now a little below 90 as they rebuild up in a beautiful battle in the middle of the map here as we come out on destination between these two players. Flash and Cal going in head-to-head -head for the gold medal, and this is exactly what we wanted to see. Yeah, look at this Vulture doing a little bit of harassment. Two cannons are being made. Dragoons come in to make sure that it's safe. But I really love the macro. Both players, so fantastic players. Two C stacks are coming on to deny this expansion. And these cannons are going to go down. As well as these vultures are going to go down. He's got to be careful. We're losing these vultures. One vulture does go down. The cannons oh, do go down. Two. Reinforcing with more vultures. Great play. And it looks like Cal is moving forward in the middle of the map with a couple of units as well. No arbiters have been seen yet because both players are focusing solely on units so far. Gujilla now with the upper hand in supply, but Flash with the money to create. It looks like a lot of the, both of them actually have a lot to do. Both gas and mineral are high as they just go Ooh. into battle right now, controlling the micro of their game, continuing to create units and send them into battle here. Good job on the expansion. They will not be taken down just yet as they start the fight. That first cell to come in, they should be able to stop this with that extra tank out is there. Is he going to get it down? Yes, there it is. Nice the job. This does go down. Nice flank though by Gushu as well. Managing to clean up that little army by Flash, but the Nexus does go down. That is huge. And look at the macro. Both players, it's up 132 to 122. Consistent pressure by both players. A ton of vultures coming down. They're going to do sick harassment if any probes are transferring. No probes are launching mines everywhere. Or oh, is he going to be able to do any significant damage? Not really. The Zealots do tank the mines, and these dudes do survive. Just really a great micro with the Zealots right now. Always seeing the Vultures, seeing him set it down. He is just in the face right now of Flash, and always seeing those Vultures when they're out, keeping his units around the map so he knows that there may be mines in that spot. And he's playing very safe as he moves around because it is just a minefield, and that's the way Flash plays the game. He's always giving you something to worry about. Yeah, Flash is double expanding now. I mean, he's got this expansion on screen now, and he has one in his main that he's going to try and take around the 10 o'clock position with. He's got to be careful with this shield because there are a ton of turrets. Oh my god, he's got oh. three for it. I don't know if he's going to be re really able to do that much damage. He's going to pull oh. and it does go down. Not really doing that much damage. Sea tanks are in position below the cliff, taking that down quite easily. Both players, Flash is pulling away a little bit in the supply, 170 to 150. And are we going to see Godzilla trying to pull this around? Is he going to do a recall? The recall all oh, on this over here. Really nice play. Where are Flash's units? They are coming down now, but there are so many units being forced to lift up that command center. Will it go down? Is it going to go down? 200 HP, 150 down 100. It is getting repaired at the same time. 
flashes. Is he gonna hold on to it? Oh my I god. Know, no, I think he's gonna hold on to it. Oh my god. Oh, oh, he saved flash it. Flash is so good. Oh my god, Flash, you are oh, wow. so good. Manages to clean up the army <laughs> as well. And that was huge for Godzilla because he spent all his army focusing that command center and he lost everything. And Flash managed to survive with the command center and will place it back down again. And then there's another Nexus going up that was not canceled. They will be going down by the hands of Flash oh. and a beautiful save. A very nice save on the command center on the other side of the map. A drop re or reaver drop there. We'll be able to stop him fully healed. He's going to set that back down. And even off of the map, or off of that expansion, he was able to save everything there. What a monster this ultimate weapon is. 180 food now to the 135. He could be looking for the kill now with plus two and one upgrade. He could be going for the kill. He's moving down 180 food to 130. He's going to be going for the kill now. He wants this World Cyber Games gold medal. And it looks like he's going to go straight down. And this army of Gojil, this small army of Dragoons, is going to get cut off. He's gonna do a ton of damage. All this army Og is gonna go down. A flank here by Godzilla at the same time. Oh, he's getting stuck where he does not want to. Getting clustered on that bridge and it is gonna give Godzilla the upper hand here. There he goes, he starts pouring out. Get the siege tanks down. He can set up a perimeter and start moving more tanks in. And here is that leapfrog with the tanks. Yeah, he's just leapfrogging towards the bottom of the base. Another expansion going down for Godzilla. This is gonna go down. Cal Super Lee on the back foot. Now he's trying to launch a counter attack on the right hand side of the base with his Arbiter. He really needs to do something in this game to pull it back. And it looks like there may be a, a, a on the right side of the map at 3 o'clock. Not liking the situation. Gujilla is going to start throwing his forces at the expansion of Flash. You can see Flash now having to pull away from this situation. And he is going to start defending mid map and start pushing his forces to that right side to stop all of that the, the damage that Gujilla is doing. Oh, this army by Flash is so strong. He just doesn't have the critical amount of units to help defend against this. And it looks like he is going to just avoid going to the natural, clean up the rest of Godzilla's army, and could be looking super good to take down the gold medal. He can't quite get into this expansion, but he is going to go with siege tanks and launch seed and just kill these cannons so vultures can go in. Goliaths are cleaning up the left hand side of the base, trying to do some form of counter attack. Mines everywhere, vultures, oh, so many mines. Wow. All these dragoons are going to melt, oh. and that is not good for our. Protoss play Godzilla at all. He did lose a lot of Vultures there, but he is just reinforcing after reinforcing right now, and it looks like he wants that gold medal. Oh, you can see so that tank big. line unseaging, and they are about to move up once again. It's just stasis here and there, one unit, but it looks like it does not look good for Godzilla at this point in time. He does not have very many resources left to do. He needs to transfer some probes right now, and even that is going to be very dangerous yeah, for him. Yeah, all he has left is that expansion on the left-hand side of the base, and <laughs> Flash just decides to move over there with this army, this sea of <laughs> tanks. Oh my god, he's moving down here, and it looks like he could be going for the final blow, and I'm not sure if Godzilla has enough. This is it, the last part of Godzilla's army is going to go down and Flash is going to be your World Cyber Games champion. He is going to win this without dropping a single game against Godzilla. Ladies and G -G. gentlemen, there it is, your World Cyber Games Grand Final 2010. Hailing for the 10th anniversary, his first time at World Cyber Games, Flash taking it home. What a monstrous effort by Flash from start to finish, only losing one game against his arch rivals Jadon. Unfortunately, he doesn't drop any other games throughout the entire tournament. Takes down Cal 2-0 in the finals. A great display of high-level play StarCraft. He is now on stage with the Korean flag, representing Korea. Korea do take top three in the StarCraft. One, two, three, gold, silver, bronze. And it is Flash, Cal, and Jadon. Yeah, let's give this guy a round of applause right here. Flash taking home that first place. All right, guys, don't forget the closing ceremony is at 5 o'clock on the main stage. Closing ceremony, 5 o'clock on the main stage as well. All players, listen up. All players, listen up. The players' party is today at 7 o'clock at the ESPN Zone. Check it out. The players' party is at 7 o'clock at the ESPN Zone. There they are right there. Flash and Gujilla, can we get Cal up on the start? Can we get uh, Jadong up on the stage as well? I mean, Koreans do take top three once again, the same as last year, 2009, was top three Koreans. This year, again, top three Koreans. Congratulations to Korea for first, second, and third again in the StarCraft tournament. Oh, an amazing job and, you know, an, a very epic Brood War tournament because it may be one of the last global tournaments held with the induction of StarCraft II into so many tournaments around the world.
Flash, showing us why he is the ultimate weapon, winning so many tournaments this year already. The only tournament he didn't win, he did lose versus J Dong in the world side of the game's career, managing to take down MSL, OSL. He did receive a golden mouse this year as well, and he is your champion, your gold medal of the world side of the game 2010, Flash. You know, it couldn't have been any better. The Flash J-Dong match was supposed to be the final in many minds, but I believe we got just as good of a matchup out of Flash and Gujilla right here at the Grand Finals. What could you have expected out of Korea? I wouldn't have expected anything different from Korea through this tournament. The only thing I the people were slightly disappointed with not having J-Dong versus Flash in the finals, but nonetheless, we were shown a high-skilled, brilliant game, Terran vs. Cross in the finals, Flash taking it down 2 0, showing us why he is the monster Terran of Korea. Players are scared of him in Pro League every time they face him. There is no reason to underestimate this guy. What a monster player. Congratulations to Flash. Yeah, definitely, guys. We are going to be closing out here for the Grand Finals. It is 5 o'clock on the main stage. We do have the closing ceremony, the Players Party at 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning into the World Cyber Games Grand Finals and stay tuned for the ceremony.